What's your opinion about Salafists? Uh, what about Salafists? What's your opinion about them? I have no opinion. They're Muslims. You don't think they're extreme? I think there's extremes in every uh, aspect of life, but to label an entire group extreme, I think that's extreme. But isn't that a matter of interpretation? Like, if, if you don't have a specific linear or covenant in which to work to, then interpretation can be left up to Sorry, what's your name? Say again? What's your name? Kalim. Kalim. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks, thanks. That's why I wanted to speak to them. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to tell them a bit about Tawheed, but 100%, unfortunately... 100%. Uh, Sorry, bro, I just yeah, get excited. And scared. even with the... Are you Muslim? No. Okay, no. you atheist? Uh, agnostic. Agnostic, okay. How did you uh, almost guess? Sorry? How much... How did you almost guess? I didn't. I just threw three options out there and you happened to be one of them. <laughs> how are you, though? You oh, good? I'm fine. I'm doing good. But okay. uh, I'm just, I was just curious what your opinion was of Salafism. Sorry, what's your name? Wahhabism. Yeah, yeah, what's your name? John. John. So my name is Ishan, by the way. Okay. So John, it's, it's like with every group. Sometimes certain people will hijack that, uh, that group and they will claim certain things. But what you have to do is you have to go to their fundamental teachings of their founders. And the founders, and what are they saying? And I don't think it's appropriate to label an entire group extreme because there's good and there's bad. So just like liberals, some liberals, like you're an agnostic, I'm assuming you take your liberal, uh, you take your moral framework from liberalism, correct? I take... Your moral framework is predicated on liberalism, yeah? With politics or religion or All morality? Of it. Morality. Well, I, I like to sin a lot, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what... Yeah. And you need um, revelation. Yeah. That's why I asked that question. I wasn't okay. trying to divert. Okay. But you can describe as you understand. I can, but I'd rather. Yeah, I'd rather save time, and I don't want to build an argument based on morality, which is predicated on Islam, and then you say, yeah, but I don't accept that morality. No, no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, that's immaterial to me. Yeah. Well, no, I've I'm already more, answered that. I'm more that. interested in, in terms of current events. Yeah. Uh, there's good Salafis. There's bad ISIS, Salafis. ISIS, what what they do with. Their, their actions against other Muslim governments, I, ISIS, Western governments. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, but it's a, it's a mistake. ISIS aren't, don't declare themselves to be Salafis. ISIS are Khawarij, that's a different side. And the majority of the Muslims are, you know, of the opinion that they're not mainstream, the Khawarij. Mm -hmm. That's why their actions are not non-mainstream either. And that's why you see them attacking Muslims more than non-Muslims. Yeah, I can understand that. It's also yeah. the so Hawarij, now that's a new term for me. I've never heard it before until today. And I'm, I'm familiar with Salafi and Wahhabi. And that's because Sunni, those terms Sunni, tend to get Sunni. used a lot on, in the media. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's where I pick them up. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's Hawarij, your... What is Hawarij? Well, Hawarij um, is uh, the... I mean, you can see the uh, embodiment of Hawarij in... Uh, in ISIS, in the, in the ISIS creed, as you were, and that's why there is. Does it come from they're coming Egypt? At loggerheads. Or, uh, does it, does roots come from Egypt or Saudi Arabia? Uh, I don't know too much about Khawarij in terms of their roots, but I do know in terms of their beliefs, they're not mainstream. They don't claim to be mainstream, and neither are the acts mainstream either. They divert a lot from mainstream Islam. Don't go away. <laughs> sorry, so I got ADD, so I, uh, my, my attention is... Oh, you got ADD? Yeah, ADD, ADHD. Oh. Uh, I, okay. I focus a lot on... Uh, it's good you told me, then obviously yeah. I'll bear that in mind. No, it's, uh, yeah, I've debated uh, Hamza before. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, Baha'i Faith and uh, oh, nice. How was that? It, it was interesting. Nice. It, I definitely learned a lot, and I went away and studied a lot as well. Um, yeah, it was a humbling That's experience. That's awesome, bro. And so on. That's but awesome. It's, um, at the end of the day, with the, the Baha'i faith, Baha okay, it's about the concept about that religion in its essence is one and the same. And that throughout time, God has been sending messengers to guide humanity um, back to God um, throughout time. Um, the founder of the Baha'i faith, we believe to be Baha'u'llah, and we believe um, 
not just Baha'u'llah, but the Bab and Baha'u'llah. We believe them to be the promised one of all ages. Do you believe he's a prophet? I do not believe he's a prophet. I believe he is a Rasul. He is a what? I believe that, that Baha'u'llah, who is the founder of the Baha'i faith. Yeah, he is a, he's a latest prophet. Yeah, yeah. He, I believe him to be not just a prophet, or not a prophet actually, but I believe him to be a Rasul, which in my opinion, because I know we were obvious, you're going to go to um, Muhammad is not the father of anyone amongst you. He is a messenger of God and the seal of the prophets. We believe to be Baha'u'llah, to be a Rasul. And we believe that there's a clear distinction between Rasul and Nabi. Um, we believe that as well, by the way. Yes, I believe that, definitely. And I believe that Baha'u'llah... So how would you define Rasul? So I think that's what you wanted to yes. know as well, isn't it? I find this so what is Rasul, yeah. So we have these two uh, words, Nabi and Rasul, right? First of all, I think it's quite important to uh, define the meaning um, yeah. of, the, of this Qatar Nabi. Why did Mah Prophet Muhammad make peace be upon him? As Baha'is, we, um, we revere and we uh, respect and love as well. Um, so he said, I am not the father of anyone amongst you. I'm, the seal, um, I'm messenger of God and the seal of the prophets, right? So as we know, as you know in, in, in Islam, that Nabi means prophets. So somebody like Erun, Ezekiel, Joshua, people that guide people back to God. We believe that Razul is has the same functionality as a as a Nabi, but more importantly, they bring a um, they bring a revelation, but more importantly, a book. We believe throughout times, or even in Islam and the Quran, it says that God has sent messengers to every nation. And so as Baha'is, we believe that God throughout time has been sending these messengers of God, or shall we say manifestations of God, um, that basically we do not believe that messengers of God are God. We believe them to be clear, um, clear reflections of, of, of God. So what's his name? Baha'u'llah? Baha'u'llah. Baha so Baha'u'llah, did he come with a book? He came with the book, yes. He came with the book. Uh, was it? Is it, do you think it's a part of the Quran or it's an addition to the Quran? I believe it's a completely new revelation altogether. I think the cycle, Adamic cycle has finished with the coming of Baha'u'llah. We believe Baha'u'llah to be Isa and we believe the Bab to be oh, the Mahdi. Okay. And who, who do you believe is the Mahdi? The Bab. The Bab? The Bab and Baha'u'llah. Who's yeah. Bab? The ba so the Bab uh, came in the 1800s in Iran and he was a Zaid, and so he wore green to represent that he came from the direct lineage of Prophet Muhammad. And um, through not just Islam, but all religions are waiting for a promised one. Okay, no worries. So, so he came with a book? Yes. He came with new laws? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Would you say you read, sorry, what's that book called? The Akdas, Kitabi Akdas. Kitabi Akdas. Yeah. Okay. And where was that revealed? It was revealed in Iran in the 1800s. Akdas, yeah? The Akdas, Akdas. Okay, okay. Would you say you read the Akdas more or the Quran more? I say I read the Akdas more and more. See, Baha'u'llah wrote 100 volumes. So he, he brought a, as Baha'i, he brought, brought a new revelation. So he's brought not just uh, teachings, but a whole design to unify mankind, as Baha'u'llah says, into one universal cause and one common faith. Oh, thank you, thank you. One, one universal cause and one common faith. That this is the time and the age yeah. where the whole of humanity can unite as one human okay. family. Okay, sorry, is your name Kaleem or Kareem? Kaleem. Kaleem. Mm. It's a nice name, my friend used yeah. to be called Kaleem well, as well. It's because I talked too much about AJD. So. No, no, it's good. It's good you told me. Now I can I can accommodate for that. Okay, so uh, so there was a book that was revealed. You believe that that book has... So if something is in the Quran mm. and something is in the... Akdas. Akdas. Would you take something in the Akdas over the Quran? I would, because I, again, I believe that Baha'u'llah is the promised one of all ages. I believe he is the one foretold in all revelations, not just the Abrahamic line, but also within Hinduism and Buddhism as well. The fifth Buddha, the return of Krishna, you know, in all, I mean, even the great. Okay, the, I'm, I'm, I'm finding this incredibly fascinating, to be honest. So how many times a day do you pray? Like, like tell me about sure, your sure, worships sure. and stuff no like problem, that. No problem, So there are three obligatory prayers. There's three? A, yeah. Really? Three. Oh, when? when? So there's a short, there's a medium, and there's a long one. 
Um, I usually say the short one, and uh, but I try to say the long one as possible. We have same as, as Islam. So, so you've got three. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm just so curious. No worries, bro. So, so there's three, and you only do two. I only do one. Oh, you only one do one. Is that personal reasons or? Um, you can choose. It, no it's, way, it's really? Yeah, you can choose, you can choose. I can save the short one for you yeah. if you want to. So there's three prayers and you get to pick whichever yeah. one you want yeah. to pick? Yeah, just one, one we want. But the long one, um, the long one is when the sun goes, um, ah, the short one you can't say when the sun goes down. But the long one you can say whatever time and the same with the medium one as well. Um, but I usually, if I'm very, very busy, I usually say the short one. Again, like in Islam, you wash your hands, you wash your face, you pray to God, and you say your obligatory prayer. So, there's that. Do you guys go to the Kaaba for Hajj? No, we go to um, Haifa, uh, which the... Let me guess, Iran. No, no, no. North, oh. North, um, North Palestine. Israel. Really? Yeah. North in Palestine. Israel? In Israel. Yeah, yeah. North Israel is where the... What do you Hajj think about what's going on? I believe there's... With regards to the Palestinians. Sure, sure. This is a good question. I believe, again, I believe that Baha'u'llah is the promised one of all ages. And the reason why I see the occupation of the, the Jews in Israel is because they occupy, because they believe that they do that, they can call upon the promised one. No, it doesn't matter why they do it. Do you believe it's, it's, it's good what's going on? Do you think it's bad? I believe any sort of persecution is bad. Okay. So, you know, I believe whether that's people being persecuted in their faith, you know, the Baha'is are persecuted in yeah. Iran quite viciously. Sorry, sorry. Um, you know, the same with the Uyghurs, that's wrong, the Rohingyas, yeah. any sort of persecution where people are, are being killed for their belief is, is totally wrong. You know? Okay. That was really fascinating and thanks for sharing yeah, that. Yeah, no so, Kaleem, yes. now that I've done a bit of reconnaissance and I know, so you're saying there's three prayers and from those pr three prayers there's one prayer, yeah? You can choose. Yeah, you but it's not just that. As Baha'is, Baha'u'llah has also said that we must read the, the prayers in the morning and read the writings as well. In the morning and evening. So we read you know prayers what? and writings in the morning uh, and evening. You're right. Uh, brother, brother, is it okay if we go there? Huh? Is we okay? We're just going to move there. Yeah, you can just move the cameras. You get to lean as well, you know what I'm saying? No, just, I'm going back oh to my uh, God. Hans is from Cumbria, right? I think he's from Wales as well. Well, can you just bring the others as well? They're going to get upset with me, yeah. All right. Bro, yeah, but that's, that's... Oh, wait, wait, wait. You said Hamza's is coming down with you. No, 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 no. I've, uh, I've, uh, I've debated with Hamza before. Oh. I know he's from... I'm from Wales. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I'm traveling back to Wales tonight, so... Um, I'm passing through, but I've debated Hamza before, so... Nice. Yeah, it's a so, interesting experience. So... That's with regards to the prayers. You got one sure. prayer, and you get to pick that prayer. Yeah. Uh, obligatory charity. Yeah. Uh, so the the thing is, what is a bit like what grinds my gears is when somebody says one thing, and then like ten minutes later, mm. it was different. Sure. sure so sure. okay, sorry for that. I'll yeah. just clarify it for you as well. Is that so do you? Yeah. So do you think that you're part of Islam, mm. or do you think that uh, you're a separate kind of so religion? We, we believe in that we are separate. That, that the coming of Baha'u'llah has brought a new religion, a new part. We don't like saying the word religion because we believe actually that all religion in, the, in its essence is one and the same. We believe that they are like chapters in the one same book. And that the only difference between all these religions, even Hinduism and Islam and Buddhism and Christianity, is the time and the age in which they come. Okay, so that's, that's good. You gave me an honest answer which you believe is a different religion. Sure. Okay, excellent. So we've we've got past that. Yeah. In terms of obli obligatory charity, when I discussed that, mm. you said, "Oh, we don't have a clergy." Just expand on that. Sure. So we don't have any priests apart from the covenant of Baha'u'llah, and then after Baha'u'llah, there's somebody called Abdul Baha, who's placed at the centre of the comp. It is a specific lineage, but um, as Baha'is, there's no figurehead in which we follow. But there's there's hierarchy of institutions. So. So you don't follow anyone, yeah? We follow something called the Universal House of Justice. So you don't follow any one like person? No, not any one type of people. Oh, okay. but we follow an institution of people. Uh, we believe oh. in something called the Universal House of Justice. We believe them to have infallibility. Oh really? Um, Who are these people? As an institution. But individually they are just they ha they are just normal. Oh okay, so it's like a consultation. Yes, in one sense. How many people are there in this? Uh, nine people. 
19th. Are they alive? They are alive. Yeah. And they no are, way. They are elected through a democratic process in which the oh. national spiritual assemblies around the world come together to the world center no way. In, in Haifa and they elect the, the Universal House of Justice, which is the supreme governing body for the Baha'is around the world. Wow, fascinating. Yeah. So you think alone they're fallible? Yeah, it, it, alone Bring they, them in that group. Yeah. They become infallible. They become infallible yeah. How does that work? Do you know, uh, you, you're from a Sunni background, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. I was going to talk about the Shia, about the Shia land, but I'm not going to talk about it. Um, yeah, so uh, as Baha'is, we believe that, you know, like the messengers of God have infallibility, you know, from, from God. Um, but we, be we don't believe that when they become messenger, that's when they become uh, infallible. But do you, let me ask you a question. Do we you believe they're, they're, they're created and they're born, yeah. uh, like... Uh, the, that so Allah's created them in a certain way, sure, special. Yes, 100%. That's the question I was going to ask you. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad made peace with God? But we're talking about, bear in mind, infallibility and fallibility, yeah? Sure, sure. So you're, was it, sorry, nine guys or seven nine, guys? Nine, nine. Nine individuals. Yeah. Can they be men, female? Or? Men. men at the only moment. men, yeah? Yeah, only men at the moment. This is at the moment? Bit, uh, no, no, only men. You said at this the is, moment. This is a bit of a controversy because when... People look at the Baha'is, they say, oh, you know, we talk about the concept of unity and diversity yeah. and stuff. But there is this law, the found uh, the son of uh, Baha'u'llah said that this will be clear as the noonday sun in the future. This is something as Baha'i I, I struggle with, you know, because in the Baha'i teachings, it talks about the, the one of the principles of the Baha'i teachings is the equality of men and women. Baha'u'llah says that men and women are like two wings on one bird. Um, but yeah, there are certain rules that I do struggle with, but um, but as a, as a practicing Baha'i, I respect it, that's why I follow it, you know, so yeah. When you say you struggle with it, does that mean you disagree with it? Um, a little, a little bit, but I would say that because I am... Salaamu brother, how are you? Good. Mashallah, you look at daps. Come on. Salaamu brother, how are you? You good? MashaAllah. <laughs> Come on. Saf, all day, every day. Come on. I'm just speaking to. Yeah, mashallah. I'll speak to you later. I'm just speaking to the brother, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah Welcome, yeah, salam. Welcome, salam. Brav, appreciate it, man. Come on. Come on. Take care, my brother. Inshallah. Yes, amen. Um, so yeah, there are certain laws. So you disagree with that? Yeah. I wouldn't say disagree with it. You I said would, a little bit. I, I would say it's challenging. To, okay. to, 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 you know, because, but as somebody who believes in Baha'u'llah, who believes in the teachers of the Baha'i faith, I, I follow it, you know, and I, I accept it. Fair dues. So Fair so dues. But just to pin this point down, so you're saying that uh, nine people that are fallible, mm. they make mistakes, they're human beings living in the yeah, 21st century. Yeah. Like, you know, watching stuff on TV, sure. watching inappropriate things, blah, blah, blah. Sure, sure, sure. Then, they end, then they're part of this group. Mm. What is it that makes the infallible fallible? Sorry, yeah, the no, fallible, yeah, infallible. No, no, yeah, fallible, yeah. infallible. Yeah. Well, we believe that this institution is a complete unique institution that has never been had before. In terms of now, the, the, the aspect of an individual, we're not following an individual anymore, that we're actually following an institution. So in this aspect that this is completely unique in one sense, and that as each person does not have um, the power to say, follow me, follow me, you know? But together they have that infallibility. It's because um, you can come here if you want. Yeah, sorry, bro, sorry, bro. you might get tired because I know yeah, you have no. to go away. As yeah, well. no, it's no, it's. Um, so in its essence, what I'm trying to say is that we listen to the House of Justice. We I get that. The, I get that. We Wicked. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, how does a fallible become infallible? How does that work? For example, if you were to ask me, nothing, or typically in Islam things are comprehensible. Mm. Majority of the things are comprehensible, sure. especially when it comes to the people that we're following, mm. especially when it comes to creedal matters. Yeah. There's no discrepancy in yeah, creedal yeah. matters because, hey, if you believe Jannah, if you don't believe Jahannam, like, yeah, sure. because the consequence is so dire, yeah. therefore creedal matters need to be clear. Yeah, that's, yeah. Why, uh, that's why I'm saying when it comes to a fallible to an infallible, what's the logical way that a person simply by making a covenant becomes infallible. How does that work? See that through revelation. revelation. So as we as Baha'is believe, we believe in Baha'u'llah. He has brought a revelation, a new revelation. 
and that we understand what he says in his guidance, in his books, in his writings, as Baha'is we follow, to be completely from God. That's when it becomes infallible, through the teachings of the messengers and manifestations of God. So those nine people, mm. what makes them infallible is reading the book? It is is through the teachings of Baha'u'llah and through the teachings of, of the guidance of not just Baha'u'llah but the Bab and Baha'u'llah. Because before before Baha'i faith was established, there was Babiism. And the Babis, which is the followers of the Bab. Babis? Yeah, the Babis, Babiism. I don't want to offend you yet, yeah, know, but you know, know I'm thinking, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a Babi. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so, sick. <laughs> yeah, I'm a beat, I'm a beatboxer. I, I do a lot, of, a lot of stuff like in London and just around oh doing stuff like that. Oh my god! That was brilliant. Lots of entertainment for your camera. <laughs> I've dropped some beatboxing in it. So um, yeah, man, through revelation, through through that infallibility, through God, you know, like you let me, understand let me the pin... Quran. Let me ask you. Yeah, yeah. You understand the Quran to be infallible, right? Yes. So that revelation came through Prophet Muhammad and as a, an mediator, and then yes. the Quran was made. So you believe that it's been found? Is it, is For all time, so, pre, to, uh, pre sure, and post. Sure, sure. So we believe that also within the teachings of Baha'u'llah as well. Exactly the same. So this structure, this institution... No, but do you though? Because Kaleem, you said yeah. yourself, those nine individuals, yeah. they start off as fallible. Sure. Then they, they become infallible. They, as an institution, they become infallible. Yeah. That's, that's what we're saying as Baha'is. When they get together... But surely the institution is made up of the individuals, isn't it? 100%. You are like correct. I am made of yeah. the organs. Yeah, yeah. If one of my organs is weak, right, not right. working... The body exactly right. But this is a teaching from Baha'u'llah. So this is a unique station throughout history. Kaleem, no, no worries. We, we know that's the teaching. Yeah, yeah. We're going to speak on the level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like on the level, if something makes sense, we say yeah. it makes sense. If it doesn't yeah. make sense, you can say, look, sure. it doesn't make sense sure, to me. Sure. Now, but can I ask I can, you a question? Of course you can. Do you believe that the Mahdi and Isa will return? Yes. How will it return? How will they return? And do you believe that he, they, they are going to return in a literal way in terms of like, you know, like Christians believe that, that Christ will come through the sky, for example, right? Do you believe in this literal interpretation of the Methi and Isa returning? Or do you believe that it's, it's a spiritual one? Let me just ask you that question. We believe it will be a physical return. Okay, sure. But in order to even entertain these uh, tertiary topics, first we need to iron out the fundamentals and, and the creed. That's why I'm so fascinated in your book, sure. your founder, yeah, yeah. and the institution of nine people and, yeah, and yeah. how it kind of works. Because once we, we know that, then we move on to, okay, what are the teachings and what comes secondary and tertiary to that. Sure. So coming back originally to that point, mm. but when I made the, and I gave the analogy about the human body, mm. so you have these nine individuals that come together, them coming together means that they become infallible. Sure. Just make that make sense to me. So, so basically, so Baha'u'llah has created a structure, has created this unique covenant and is inviting people, all from all backgrounds, to get to come together to build it. There are institutions on a local, on a national, and then that international level. So, and it's a democratic process of electing people onto these institutions. So Baha'u'llah says, for example, in this day and age... I get that, I get that, and that's, and that's brilliant. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I'm trying to pin it down to how does a person that's fallible become infallible? A process of election does not change a person's misgivings of the past, do you see? For example yourself, for example yourself, Kaleem. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to embarrass you on camera and this and that, but generally people have seen pornography, whether it's at school or whatnot. They've lied, yeah, they've stolen stuff, they've done madness. Now, yeah. as a follower of Baha'u'llah, let's just mm. say you, go, you get voted in, mm. yeah, and you're one of those nine people that get elected. Sure. Now suddenly, you part of that shura or that committee, there are eight other people like yourself. So there's nine Kaleems there. And suddenly now, you have become infallible. Why? Because, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're saying because of the teachings, because of you being voted, because this is why, that, this happened last time as well. It's all good, broski. Yeah. It's a mad one, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's like I'm down here. Yeah. No, but we, we stood here last time and then that's, that's what happened last time. It's a mad one. 
Was he represented? God knows, bro. God knows. <laughs> But um, yeah, so yeah, you're trying to understand about the infallibility. Yeah, no, so look, there there has to be logically, for example, a prophet who's committed sins and doing madness. Yeah, Allah forbid. I'm saying an individual, and then he becomes a prophet, and then he becomes a prophet. People are gonna people are gonna struggle. Yeah, they're gonna struggle. They're gonna say you used to lie, you used to cheat. That's why the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Even before Islam, he was known as Sadiq al Amin, yeah, the trustworthy, the truthful. And one of the examples that he gave when he came on the mountain was, "Look, have you known me to tell a lie to the nearest meaning?" I said, "No, of course not." So there has to be a degree of, you know, preservation. So that's what I'm trying to understand now. That I can understand that in Islam. If somebody said, oh, your prophet did this in the past, I'll say, yeah, of course, that's true, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you also have to understand the context of the time. <laughs> I, yeah, I hate yeah, it yeah. when people Look, say that, you know, they, they try to equate the time of Christ with the time of Muhammad, yeah. the peace be upon them both. You can't do that because they're completely two, two different times. You know, people at the time of Christ, you know, <laughs> people believed in the one God. They came from settlements and they had ju judiciaries and courts and the time of Prophet Muhammad, the peace be upon him. Didn't have that. So what are you going to do if somebody breaks your daughter? You know. It's, All right. So it's it's it's. So I can totally understand that. In terms of going back to the infallible part, we understand that messengers and the manifestations. We call them manifestations of God. Messengers of God. Messengers of God are infallible. You know, all the way to Adam, they are infallible. They have direct, uh, on you know, um, communication through the Most High, and then they, they reveal to the people. So, so we understand that. In this day and age, we are, as, ba as Baha'is, we believe Baha'u'llah has created a specific covenant for not just the Baha'is, but for all the peoples of the world. You know what? Just give me one sec. Go over there. Uh, Sam, should we move over there? <laughs> because look, these guys in the... Move over there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Just move everything, please, yeah? The brothers are going to get upset. I keep moving. Yeah. Or maybe down there. That might be nice for your picture in terms of background. Yeah. Camera. We'll see. We'll see yeah. The All right. Camera. So this is. Remember. This is. Be a bit on final cut. Bro. <laughs> okay. Right here. Yeah. So, so yeah, talk, yeah. Talking about infallibility. So we understand that the message is Correct me if I'm wrong, it's just gonna come down to yeah. it's the process. Yeah. You get elected and it's the process yeah, yeah. and the pro uh, the process causes it. Yeah. So I think I've made my point, isn't it? Sure, I think you've sure. understood it as well that I'm saying that it logically doesn't make sense. Let yeah. me ask you a question yeah. though. In Islam today, especially in Sunni the Sunni what is the correct interpretation in terms of which people should follow? Because at the moment, everything is so divided, even within the Muslim communities, not just within Sunni Islam, Shia Islam as well, and so on. The reason why Baha'u'llah has created this structure is so that the Baha'is won't be split off into different sects, right? There has been... There's no sects in Baha'i... Baha there have been um, attempts, and they are, they are, they are, but the mainstream... Kaleem, listen to yourself, though. Sure. You're, you're saying that... Baha'u'llah has come sure. because there are sects in Islam. And then I asked. I haven't said because there's sects in Islam. I believe that Baha'u'llah. That's has a point come. that you were making, though, isn't it? You're but saying that it's divided, it's splintered, there's groups. Mm. So Baha'u'llah has come mm. to, to unify people, isn't it? To unify people, but also to understand that prophecies in all religions have been fulfilled with the coming of Baha'u'llah. It's not just for the Muslims. For the Hindus but do you see what the issue with the, with the groups thing was? Mm. That if the issue with the groups thing is mm. that you've admitted that okay, Baha'u'llah had to come, mm. and Baha'u'llah has come, and now, like there's still groups there. Sure, there's a you know the Baha'i faith. And his job's not done then, isn't it? It's not done. It's only 200 years old. The faith, the religion, 
And we believe as Baha'is, we're going through the birth pangs of a new world order. We believe that the world is disintegrating, and you can see that in the world with the amount of violence, persecution, and so on. Um, when, when in reality, as Baha'is, we see that the only way towards a better world is the realization that the earth is but one country and mankind are citizens. That the essence of all religions are one. When I say essence, I say that the essence of all of it is one and the same. We say the time is different from each other. As you you mentioned believe, essence, mm. which is brilliant. And I want to take a segue from that. Sure. When it comes to essence, mm. let's, let's get to the essence of this. Sure. What has Baha'u'llah <laughs> bought us sure. that Islam hasn't. Interesting. So we have to understand the context of the time of Islam and Christianity and Judaism. We'll focus on, on Islam. The context of the time of Islam, that they, a lot of the people at that time would not think like us today, right? So we understand, for example, through science, that the world is you, You've made a mistake already. You're saying at that time, Islam. Islam, we believe, is of all times. I understand that, yeah, and yeah. that's correct. I believe that as well. Okay. But do you believe that the, the mentality of the people at that time is the same time as today. Mentality of no time is the same. In fact, the mentality yeah. when I entered the park is different to the mentality I have now. Sure, but the mentality... Yeah. I understand what yeah. you're saying, and you're completely right, but the mentality when you came out from the park, the majority of people believe that the world is round. When you came into the park, it's the same. Believe the mentality that the world is round. What I'm trying to say is that the times of the age of that people they still thought the earth was flat. They didn't even understand people lived in other countries, let alone their own villages. This is why the concept of progressive revelation, as, as Baha'is, we put forward. We say that religion has to be progressive and that we cannot put our minds back into the, into the past. Baha'u'llah says this, he says, and, and then, uh, you can respond to it, he says that the all-knowing physician, he calls the messengers of God, manifestations, physician, the all-knowing physician hath its finger on the pulse of mankind. He perceiveth in his unerring wisdom the remedy, uh, the, the disease and prescribeth the remedy. Every age hath its own problem and every individual his own particular aspiration. The remedy in which the world needeth cannot be, that of, cannot be the same as that of a subsequent age may require. Be anxiously concerned of the needs of the age you live in and center your, your deliberations upon its exigencies and requirements. Meaning that today in this world that we live in is a completely different time to the past. We have the instruments, the technology that you have in front of me and so on, to unite the world as one human family. But the only problem is, is that materialism and division has, has seeped into the world and so on. So Baha'u'llah has come to say the earth is but one country and mankind is citizens. He has created a design to unite all the peoples into one universal cause and one common faith. And we say the time, this time, is a completely different time to the time of Moses, of, of Buddha, of Krishna, and may peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad. So, yeah. so I'm going to ask you again, what has Baha'u'llah bought that's different? So At the he, moment, everything you've said yeah. is it's included in Islam. I, you haven't bought anything new, anything yeah. substantial, anything mm. that's like, whoa. That's and different. My, my, my... Oh, sorry, an improvement. An improvement. Okay, so... So Baha'u'llah has written over a hundred volumes of books. Each one equal... So give me, give me a teaching of mm. Baha'u'llah that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and that the Qur'an mm. does not have. That will change, that will improve my life. That will improve your life. The concept of, uh, yeah, the earth is but one country and mankind is citizens. The understanding of a well, global the, society, global the, world. Uh, you, I don't think you need me to tell you the copious verses and hadith I, yeah, that, yeah. that reflect those exact sentiments. I, I agree with you, but it goes back to what I'm trying to say is that the design, a design to unify mankind. Tim Paul Muhammad didn't bring that. He did, though. he did, he did. He bought a design. He bought a design to unify the whole the world. The concept of the Ummah is exactly that. I understand that. What, but don't what? you believe yeah. that somebody from the Ummah will come and and guide people? It talks about in the Quran itself. We're not talking about, about guide. We're not talking more about messengers will yeah. come. We're not you know? talking about guiding at the moment. At the moment, you're saying this concept of universe, universality. Okay. Yeah? yeah. This is a concept that is unique to Islam in the in the sense that we are an Ummah number one. Number two, when we're praying Salah, a king, a pauper, a child, a woman in the same building, 
In fact, the, the, the king, the pauper, whoever it is, they're standing shoulder to shoulder. We are going to Hajj together. If that is not something, and, and again, majority of the Muslims, I'd say, correct me if I'm wrong, at least the, the Sunnis are about 1.5 billion. So when the Muslims start going for Taraweeh prayers, which is for Ramadan prayers, you can see the unity of the Muslims. Of course. When the Muslims go for Hajj, people know the Muslims are going for Hajj. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I when Muslims give zakat, newspapers like the Daily Mail have to say yeah, yeah. that this religion pays the most. I understand. So that. when it comes to this, Kaleem, the universality principle of the Ummah yeah. is something which is present in Islam yeah. and which is something that makes Islam special. Yeah, I, I want, I Some, want, yeah. I know, I totally agree. So that's why I'm saying something that's mm. not mentioned like surely Actually, look if it's a totally new revelation sure. you should come with a totally new idea yeah yeah so in islam giving the concept of zakat 2.5 percent obligatory of your sure. annual savings yeah, that's yeah. a new concept yeah yes mm. it may be that was it that was introduced in the past though 2.5 percent of well, your annual savings obligatory well, going to the, the ummah money, but the concept of zakat itself was introduced in the past let me give you an example umar and 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 so on and as they spread through conquest the concept of zakat and charity and things like that was universal it was practiced within the umar as well though right no what you what i'm what i'm saying is this was introduced by the quran and the sunnah mm. originally from the original texts what you're talking about is Umar, the Caliph, the second Caliph, peace be upon him, may Allah be pleased with him. He then spread that idea such that people start, had to start adhering to it if they were in, in Muslim lands. It's not a new idea. Okay, then Kaleem, you need to tell me which other religion, ideology says it's obligatory for you to pay 2.5% of your annual savings and that will go uniquely to the believing men and the women. I, I understand that we have the concept of hukuk the same in the Baha'i faith, but the concept of giving... Hukuk are, giving are rights. Yeah, I Hukuks are rights. Yeah, I this, Kaleem, the reason why I'm emphasizing on this yeah. is because it is unique. I will speak to people of other faiths, it won't get challenged. That's why if you're to challenge it, and I welcome but, it, yeah, I, yeah, but do it like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Thank you so much brother, for, for that. But let me ask you, do you believe that the Muslim world is united right now? I believe that the Muslim world is united, yes. You believe it's yes. united. So all this, you might, you might go into politics on bias. So all this, like, you know, the Shias and the Sunnis? Yes, we're Sun, united. You're united? Yes. Really? Yes. So when in the Middle East that Sunnis are killing Shias and Shias are killing Sunnis? Killing doesn't mean that they're doing it just for religion and they're just but, doing it for creedal reasons. But some of them, like, believe uh, emphatically right. that they're there is a correct interpretation. Like, for example, if, Are they, in, in, in yeah. some states, somebody might say, if I say something bad about the companions, they could be killed. Yes. And if somebody in another country said there's something Let bad me about, about, about the, uh, the yeah. imama, they could be slaughtered. I've understood the, what you've said. Yeah. They are not united, my friends. They're not. I'm going to tell you, and then you're going to have to take those words back. Mm. Because you didn't ask me what I mean by united. Mm. That, was your, uh, that was your mistake. Mm. What I mean is creedally, and even when we were having the discussion there, mm. you agreed with me. Mm. Creedally, we are united. One God, sure. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Quran. This is, this is unity. That, that's now, unity. Kaleem, yeah, yeah. that's the same with us as well. That's so why I said you have to take your words back. As well. That's In why I would say that. But these other differences, I believe, Kaleem, mm. if we uh, are to speak on a frank basis for long enough, I believe that we will end this discussion with being unified as well. Because what it is, is sometimes it's the people that are around us, it's what we hear, it's the arguments that we've heard, it's the baggage that we have from community and society. But if we go to first principles and we understand things bare bones, then we have to realize that, you know what? This does make sure, sense. I get you, but the, the priests, the, the imams, the like. For example, let's take the war. Okay, we're going to get political talking about this. But you've got a war happening between two Muslim countries in the Middle East, like Did, Iran and Saudi Arabia. Kaleem, tell, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. They're using another Muslim country. Tell me if I'm wrong. But 
wars will continue to the Day of Judgment. Yeah, but that's why I say that I say the Day of Judgment is coming. Will Allah. they continue? I believe that the I believe the Day of Judgment is when the latest messenger and manifestation of God arrives and oh. abrogates the laws of the past. Will he come? Through. Yes. So as Baha'is, we believe Baha'u'llah oh. has come. I, I thought he had there. come and then he passed away. He has passed. He has passed away. Oh. Didn't. Prophet Muhammad for the physical body pass away as well. No, no, we're not talking about the Prophet Muhammad. I'm talking about Baha'u'llah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I genuinely course, thought he passed away. Gone, I'm not doing. I'm not taking a dig. I, I just genuinely I, believe that yeah, yeah, yeah. because you said the nine are alive. Yeah. I thought maybe Baha'u'llah is alive. No, no, I don't no, know. No. I don't he, know. He, he passed away in the 1800s. But um, yeah. We How did he pass away? He died on his bed in old age. He was persecuted most of his life. He ended up in. But he died a natural death. Na natural death through like years of absolute hardships and suffering. Being That's every prophet, like you said. Yeah, every yeah. prophet has gone through. Baha'u'llah talks about this. He says, The ancient beauty have consented to be bound in chains Kaleem. so that mankind may be released from its bondage. Okay, let's come back to this point. Mm. So, again, we haven't pinned down something which is completely unique. The concept of zakat is not present mm. in that sense mm. in the other religions. Sure. If you look at pilgrimage, the process of pilgrimage is unique to Islam. That's why you have Salah, Zakat, fasting for 30 days the way Muslims do it. It's unique. Well. Is we it done? Nine, we have a 19 day fast as well. Well, that's what I'm saying. Let me ask you a question. Do you do so just, just to, go yeah, yeah, because I'm gen I genuinely want to know what makes or uh, what you guys have bought that's different and unique Completely unequivocally. Un okay. So the main, do you, first, let me ask you a quick question. Do you believe the messengers and manifestations of God have the ability to abrogate the laws of the past. What do you mean? So, for example, uh, Christ and Muhammad abrogated the law of no. the Sabbath. No. So they don't have. So they they, they, they by definition they're messenger of God. Yeah. They do what God tells them to do. There we go. So exactly as Baha'is we say exactly the same. God tells them. So we believe that Baha'u'llah has abrogated certain laws of the past. Okay, that's fine. But yeah. what has he bought that's special? That's sure. what I want to know, Colleen. So again, this system to bring everybody into unity. The concept as well. Um, You've got something here, by the way, oh, because we're on camera. I don't want yeah, you to be yeah, upset no afterwards because no no. you know, sometimes I'm filming yeah, and I've yeah, got yeah. something lodged in my head. I was yeah. like, I wish somebody told it's me. All right, bro. As long as I got yeah, yeah. No, no, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Boogie down my nose. No, um, no. So, the, yeah. So, also, he's Baha'u'llah's talked about, and I know you're going to say, well, in Islam, he spoke about this, but specifically but in the Kaleem, I'm the, only going to say it's the there in Islam. Men and women has uh, spoke about yeah, as I'm well. only going to mention Justice. something. Like, look, if I, if you say... Uh, the harmony of yeah. science and religion, look, look, which if, has never been look, talk, if you, if, about. If, you, if you say in the Baha'i faith, mm. we do X. Sure. And I say in Islam, we do X as well. Sure. And we don't. Mm. It's easy for you to say, Zishan, you don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. So when you're anticipating that, I'm going to say, yeah, but in Islam, we do that as well. Then don't mention that. Mention something that's unique because you know, here, here's what we're saying, um, Kaleem. Mm. We believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sure. was the final Khatam al Nabiyyin, yeah. and the Rasul. We don't believe it's yeah, but, but, that, but that's what I'm saying though. We believe yeah. that the Prophet Muhammad is Khatam al Nabiyyin, he's the yeah, La Nabi Abadi. We believe, we believe he's the last Rasul, yeah. seal. He's the seal of the prophets. I understand. Now. But not the messengers, because he didn't say the messengers. He said. Let me just make this point, yeah? Mm. So, when you say that somebody has come as a seal, he's come to complete something, he's come to end it, he's come to conclude it, whatever synonym, whatever linguistical gymnastics we want to take, that means that there is no one that's needed after him. Let me ask you. He a is, let me just finish the point, yeah? He is the one. I get yeah? You. He's completed the message. Sure. Now, to say that no, he's that message is incomplete. That means there is a deficiency in that message. Sure. Now, somebody else pops along and says, "No, we've bought a better message." Now, I want to know what makes that message better. So far, I've I've tried to kind of push you on this. Mm. You keep saying unity, 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 unity diversity. and system, uh, an actual system. There's nothing there. Right, writings, the talks about the harmony of science and religion, talks about the equality of men and women, which was never These are all a things you're talking about Islam. I know, but yeah. never taught as a principle. In terms of what you said there about Khadr, because yeah. I, I feel I need to address that as well. But, it, but the thing with this, Kaleem, yeah. is we only talk about Khatim yeah. once we can pin down the prerequisites, the Aqeedah, the belief mm. of the faith. I, I understand. You see, and I want to sure, know 
uh, before even entertaining yeah. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying that, okay, let's just say we put the sure. other yeah, stuff yeah. to the side. Can what you are you? Let me ask you a question. At the time of Muhammad, they said, so when Muhammad talked about science to his people, what did they do? They put him down. No. They did, when he said no. that, the, that the earth revolves around the sun, they said to him, don't talk about this. This goes against our principles of what we believe in. So their mentality at that time, again, was like children. They still thought the world was flat. They were not... Uh, yeah, but that, uh, they were, but they that were not verse so is not... Uh, to those people, there's no evidence to suggest that they interpreted that verse to be that the earth was round. Yeah, but that, a lot of them at that time still had a very... a mentality like we don't have to do. Would you agree with that? Kaleem, obviously. Obvious, there we thing. go. So therefore, you know, just to let you Kaleem, know... I just want to know what's, what sure. you guys have bought that's so, special. The harmony of science and religion. If you one of, if one of them, were to come to me... The, the equality Kaleem, of men and women. It, Kaleem, if sure. you'd come to me, mm. I would give you one thing after another sure. after another. I wouldn't stop. Right. Sure. You'll mention yeah. one or two things and then that's it. You, you yeah, pause. The, con the concept of justice and equality in a system that addresses that is, is a new, completely new thing. The system in which I told you over there about the different levels of the, insti of the, of the high institutions, that there's no priests and clergy, but there's a hierarchy of institutions, completely That's new. just replacing completely one form design. of clergy with another form the of clergy. The concept of consultation. How you talk to people. Consultation is something Consult mentioned in the Quran. I know it is, but if Baha'u'llah talks oh, about this, Baha'u'llah talks about this. something more. new, mate. This is completely That's why no, I invite you new. to. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. are you just fighting over stories? No, not really. I, but as again, yeah. let, me, let, let, me, let me talk about Baha'u'llah. He's not, no. You're what? not Christian. No, I'm Baha'i. What's a Baha'i? Oh, oh okay. that's the, uh, the Buddhist kind of a Hindu. No, no, no. So as Baha'is, we believe in Bab and Baha'u'llah. We believe them to be. The Which promised one of all ages originated in Iran. Well, so, so, sorry, can we just finish this convo? Because you'll have to go and I mean. Sure, sure. Can, let, let me let me um, just address that point about Baha'u'llah and the seal of the prophet. I think it's quite important. Is that first of all, if we're having a look at the seal of the prophets, because yes, you can say to me, oh, but what's this? What's that? But I think you have to understand who Baha'u'llah is. And for me, Baha'u'llah is that yes, you have that. Okay. Okay. Let me finish. No, no, let, let me do that point. I'm, okay. I'm actually helping you out. Let's talk about Khatan Nabi. I'm going to help you out there. Yeah. You said we need to know who Baha'u'llah is. Yeah. Now I'm going to let you talk. Sure. Tell me what makes Baha'u'llah special. Sure. Go, floor okay. is yours. All right, so first of all, I want to talk about. Muhammad. Just about him, please, yeah? Sure, because sure, I need sure. to pray as well. I know, brother. Let, let me finish. It's let the Asr prayer. Let me make so I'm going to, for, for three, four minutes, if you talk about Baha'u'llah, yeah. I will uninterrupted sure. let you speak. Sure. So in the Quran itself, it talks about that new messengers will come. In Surah 735, it says, O children of Adam... Not about him coming, tell me about no, him. No, let him. me finish this book. They shall come to you messengers rehearsing my signs. And if you fear God and do good work, no harm shall come to you. So it talks about the concept that more messengers will come. So Baha'u'llah himself, yes, we thank believe Baha'u'llah is the latest messenger, not the last. We believe that more messengers in the future will come. You're not because, telling me about him, you're telling me so, of him, sure, so not about him. So Baha'u'llah originated in Iran. He was born into a um, into a wealthy family, but he lost all of that. And he lost it when he said, "I am the promised one of all ages." He centered his thoughts and his uh, motives on helping the poor and so on. He was banished from Iran, um, and he was exiled to Baghdad, to Adrianople, Constantinople, and then to a prison called the Most Great Pit, called the Sia Char. Uh, which is in Akka. Uh, okay, so maybe, I was, may, may, maybe I was. Maybe I was. I should have given a bit more detail. Ah. Biographical data is good. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what makes him special. What makes Baha'u'llah special is that his writings. That he he says, "O son of man, wert thou to speed through the immensity of space and traverse the expanse of heaven, yet thou wouldst find no rest save in submission to our command and humbleness before our face." So these quotations. So number one, he's a good writer. He, well, I would reckon he's a writer from God. So those writers... Okay, number two. Number two. 
Okay, what makes Bahá'u'lláh but what makes Bahá'u'lláh special yes. is that he has brought this system of consultation for the Baha'is to talk with each other, a, a democratic system that, as, as you said when you're talking about the Ummah, about all peoples, no matter what creed, race, or what class they are, can come together and make decisions together on a local, on a national, and international level. So preach cohesion, number three. Number three. Um, yeah, the prayers and the writings uh, itself, you know, fasting and things like that. The concept of the earth is but one country, mankind's citizens, unity and diversity. And that talking about that more messengers will come in the future because of the times of the needs of the age you live in constantly fluctuate and differ. So that makes perfect sense. And the concept of progressive revelation is unique in religious history in itself. Because the progressive revelation was saying that revelation needs to progress with the times. Nobody in religious history, no messenger of God has spoken about progressive revelation. Muhammad, may peace be upon him, said, I have sent messengers to every nation. So he has talked a bit, little bit about progressive revelation. But this concept that revelation never finishes is completely unique in all of religion. So that's, that's my... <laughs> Do you see, when, when you talked about him, mm. I didn't interrupt. And I'm giving you more time. Sure. Is there any other special, unique things about Baha'u'llah sure. that, because you're saying he's the last, he's the no, cream... No, we're not saying he's the last. But he's the special one. We say he's the messenger of God for today because... Oh, so you believe there'll be more coming? Yeah, because the times of the needs of the age that we live in are going to be constantly different. You're thinking in a thousand, two thousand years of time. We might have the technology to, to connect planets intergalactically, yeah. right? We okay. are moving in that, in that direction. I've so understood you your point. That, so do you think that... There I think I misunderstood sure. because uh, you, you didn't get to the point. Now yeah, sure. I think I feel you've got to the point, mm. which is you're saying that there's going to be more prophets. There's going to be no more... No prophets. No prophets. Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. Messengers. No, there's no. going to be more messengers. There's a difference. Look, for us... Rasul, Would you allow me to explain the difference from a Baha'i perspective between you did, Rasul and You Nabi? did. We don't I, think I didn't completely, my friend. Okay. Let me just very soon explain that we say that there's Rasul and Nabi. This is my definition of it. Okay, this is how I perceive it. Okay, bear with me. That you got a DVD player and you have an Xbox, right? You will never. So the DVD player has the functionality to play DVDs. The Xbox has the functionality to play DVDs but also Xbox games. You will never say that an Xbox is a DVD player, but has the same functionality. This is exactly what we would say between Nabi and Rasul, that the Rasul has the same functionality as the Nabi, but it is not a Nabi because they are two different things. And that's from a Baha'i perspective that how we see Rasul and Nabi, and why we see more Rasul coming in the future. As it says in the Quran, okay. there shall more messengers come in the more messengers come to Yeah, the Quran doesn't talk in the future tense that more messengers does, will they come. They shall. That, that's future. And if you look at... Where's that verse? Quran, Let's look at it okay. now. Yeah, pull or, it out. Or whenever. Also no, no, no. Whenever. Don't, don't, don't change it because that's a, that's a big claim that the Quran is talking sure, sure, sure. future. Okay, let, let, let me bring it. I have it right here. Oh, children, madam. They shall come to you apostles from among yourselves, rehearsing my signs. And who, uh, and whoso shall fear Allah and do good works, no fear Wait, 735, yeah? 735. And check it out, because you've just got a single verse there. Okay. Well, brother, we should wrap this up soon. We have been talking for a while. You know us, we could chat for yeah, the yeah, ages, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, children of Adam, mm. if there come to you messengers from among you relating to you my verses, sure scriptures and laws, sure. then whoever fears Allah and reforms, sure. there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Does that imply past? O children of Adam. O children of Adam, if they... If there comes to you messages sure. from among you, relating sure. to you my verses. If they, so that's not implying the past. That is also implying the future. Many texts say whenever. That implies the future as well. You know, so it's, it's not just talking about the past here. You know, the, the semantics thing. The linguistics, I know. No, you know what? Like, uh, it's, we can't rely on little semantic. Oh, it, it could imply this, could imply that. Look, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was, was clear. Sure. Yeah? And claiming that he is the end, he is the seal. But also the Jews and the Christians believe that their, their religion and their prophets are the last. 
Yeah, and, and but Muhammad they can't be. They can't back that up with their scripture because the whole point is, if the scripture is sure. being changed, if today the Quran. But you can't back it with if your the, scripture if, as well. I can. You know, because, because I just showed to you right there, if they shall come to you messengers, implying that there is the future. Plus, you also believe the Mahdi and Isa will, will come. No, it's no, not no, Isa no. a messenger of God. Look, Isa not a Rasul. Because if I start talking about the tafsir of this ayah, then we have to go into the tafsir of this ayah. Who is this? Who is it being referred to? Sure. Who's being spoken here? Sure. It's not speaking at the time of the people, uh, the Ummah of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because then you would be correct. But that's why I'm saying semantics. Then I have to pull out tafsir books. Yeah. It's not talking about like at, yeah, that at the time of the Prophet, you're believing in the Prophet, and there's going to be other prophets. However, it, however, it doesn't say prophets because it says messengers. That's that's the that's the difference. Because I'm in agreement with you. I'm not against yeah, but, you. I believe Prophet Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. Yeah, but look, if you look at this verse, mm. does it not say, if, O children of Adam, if they come to you messages from among you relating to you verses? Mm. Yeah? Why does this have to talk about the future? Because you believe that the Mahdi and Isa will come from the Ummah. And you believe that when they come in the future, when they come in the future, they're going to do a lot of stuff <laughs> on Judgment Day. So the future is actually really important. You know, as Muslims, you believe a lot of things are going to happen in the future, right? Look. So this is the reason why he talks about this. Let me ask you, in all of religious history, has a messenger of God come exactly the same person as they were before? Wasn't the physical out appearance of Muhammad the different, different to Moses, different to Jesus, different to anybody? So when Prophet Muhammad came, he, he actually most of his revelation okay, okay. Warning Let, his let's, let's get to the crux of the matter now, yeah? So the crux of the matter is you're claiming that, okay, this verse is saying that there's going to be more prophets that are coming. Not prophets, uh, messengers. Okay, messengers. Yeah, I'm telling you whether it's prophets, whether it's messengers, there is ijma'ah, bil ijma'ah. In Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, there is total agreement that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger. This is this is this is this is creed, but but that's what I'm saying. But, uh, you, you got no, 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 wait, wait. Let me finish because I I let you speak. Sure, sure, there's sure, there's, sure, there's sure, so sure, many sure. things that I have sorry. to answer, yeah, but sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. Because uh, okay, so we believe that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the final messenger, final Rasul. If somebody comes and makes the claim, oh uh, no, there's gonna be somebody else. Okay, then what makes that person special? You weren't able to give me anything concrete or something unique about him that came afterwards that would make it special. But you alluded to the fact that the Quran has discrepancies uh, because of the fact that, well, actually, you didn't say discrepancies, actually. You said that it's for a specific time. Yeah, it's time specific. What we're saying is that the Quran has principles which actually prove that it is not time specific. For example, the naturalistic and cosmological verses can be interpreted from the time of the Prophet according to that science and they can be also interpreted according to modern science as well. Those cosmological and naturalist, naturalistic verses are actually, if I'm correct, then you've acknowledged that the Quran is actually for all times. But what interpretation are you going for? This is the problem I find. You didn't listen the, to what I said. The, the, the let me tell you once more. A literalist interpretation. Let, let, let me tell you Quran. once more. Let me tell you once more. I'm saying that the natural, that the cosmological and naturalistic verses that are in the Quran at the time of the Arabs can be interpreted according to the science of that time, and it can be interpreted according to the science of this time as well. I disagree. I that disagree. no, I'll give I you an example. I'll give you an example. Of, no, no, let me just say just one thing. I'll oh. give you that the time of the people of Prophet Muhammad didn't understand that the earth revolved around. But, but that's but that's what I'm saying. That how do you let me finish? I can go explain ahead, that go to go you. Go that at that the verses of the Quran can be interpreted to fit the paradigm of the people that believe that the earth was flat. Those verses can be interpreted that way. Those very verses can also be interpreted according to modern science that the earth is round. This proves that the Quran is timeless because it is relevant to the people of those times and it's relevant to the people of today. However, when you look at the Bible, the, there is not Listen. enough leeway in the Bible that Christians can say the same thing, especially yeah. when it comes to flat earth. There are some verses that the Christians would struggle to say, look, this is something that can be interpreted in both ways. Yeah. Not every single verse does that. Yeah. And that's one. The concept of ijtihad. Mm. This is something in Islam that we have 
continuing scholarship. We have mujaddideen fil ummah that will come afterwards. But a prophet, a sharia, a code of conduct, a skeleton, that's something that is unique to the prophets. Now, if somebody is going to come, for example, at the time of Jesus, their scripture, peace, peace be upon him, when he was raised to the heavens, that believe scripture, literally. we believe literally he was raised See, to the I heavens. Yes. Right? Yeah. The yeah. So the scripture afterwards was changed. That's something you can see today. You can measure it. King James Version, New International Not Version. With you. Yeah. I agree with you. However, with the Quran, you look at the old manuscripts Hadith, and you look at the new manuscripts and you will see that the Quran is identical. 100%. It's the, the same. Hadith has been changed. The hadith I will I will answer the hadith. Yeah. But That's do why you I go to the Quran. See if it's in contradiction look, with the Quran. But what I just spent 5 minutes saying, do you agree with that though? No, I, I agree with the, what you're saying. That then. Quran is timeless. I get, it's let, preserved. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't been changed. Let, let me, do you agree with that? Yes. Let go. me let me let me bring up something back here. When you talk do you think that Islam started when Muhammad came? No. No. So in terms of time, there have been Muslims in the past. Right? Yes. Okay, so fluctuating between that, to be a Muslim is to surrender to the will of God, right? So, in terms of time, and I know that the passage by here, this day I've perfected your religion for you and have filled the measure of my favors upon you, and it's my pleasure. Do you accept that, that by the way? I do. But let me, let perfected. Me, let, me, let me just say What, what does perfected Perfect. mean? Wait, so, let me ask you, when I read a chapter in a book, have I perfected that chapter? If you read a chapter. So, if I have a book, and I perfected yeah. the chapter. If you tell me, Kaleem, that I have finished my drawing, it's mm. perfected. It's perfected. That means no one is mm. going to come afterwards and start adding to it. Mm. No one, not even you are going to come and say, yeah, but I need to yeah. change. I've perfected it, but I need to change this. I that's contradictory. But, In fact, that's deception. At, at the end, yes. In one sense, you're right. But the other side as well is that there has been debates upon the concept of seal. <laughs> in terms of linguistics, but then I don't speak Arabic unfortunately, but understanding that. But let me just you, you told me definitions of Nabi and Rasul. Let me yeah. tell you the definition of differences. Mm. Go ahead, go ahead. We believe that difference of opinion is difference of opinion that occurred at the time of the Sahaba. Mm. Would you agree with that definition? Say that again. Sorry, say it one more time. Yeah, that's why you sorry, said you were paying sorry, attention, sorry, no, but you weren't. I am paying attention. I'm just trying to get to a verse. Um, so you can pick out these yeah, selected yeah. verses. Yeah. I could pick out selected yeah. verses. They speak to each other. Right, 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 yeah. Right, okay, okay. Like, yeah. Like, I could do that and yeah, we're just going to yeah, be so, here all okay. day. Say, say your question to me. So, I'm saying difference of opinion is difference of opinion at the time of Sahaba. Sure. So, if Sahaba disagreed on something, as an Ummah, we can say there is difference of opinion. But if Sahaba unanimously agreed on something, we can't say there's difference of opinion. Is that infallibility? No. Do you agree with that statement, though? I, well, I, as Baha'is, we follow the line of the Imam. So, I, we believe that Ali was the, the infallible mouthpiece at the time. So, in terms of... In uh, terms of difference of opinion in the Islamic canon, is there something that's making sense? <coughs> something that's making sense. Um, in this, in this day to Okay, day, let me put a cherry on top. Go, go, go. Prophet peace be upon him said, mm. the best uh, time is my time, mm. then the time after it, then the time mm. after it. Yeah, yeah. That's a cherry on top. So I'm going to ask you the question again. Difference of opinion mm. that's done outside of the best of time, mm. does it make sense for that to be classed as difference of opinion or only difference of opinion that, that the Prophet said mm. is within those paradigms that he said? Sure. So it's in terms of difference of opinion, um, again, you need a structure, in my opinion, an infallible structure to guide people as religion progresses forward. So You've missed my point. About the Sahaba, You've missed my point. I believe that the holy Imama had the infallible mouthpiece to guide the Ummah at that time. You've missed my point. My point was, and I'm going to develop the point now, otherwise we're just going to go back and forth. Sure. The Prophet peace be upon him said, the best time is my time, then the time after it, then the time after it. Then as Muslims, it makes sense for us that that's where we take our understanding from, that time. Somebody comes after that time mm. and then says, I'm this, I'm that, he's this, he's that. No, that's not classed as difference of opinion. Difference of opinion, Islamically, is difference of opinion that was there at the time of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and then oh, yes, Atba'u Tabi'een. Yeah, so now, yeah, so, so now, so now bearing that in mind now, mm. 
bearing that thing in mind, mm. so if there is unanimity at the time mm. of companions, mm. unanimity at the time of the Tabi'in and uh, Atba'u Tabi'in, that there is only one, well, the last Prophet messenger is Muhammad, peace be upon him. If there's unanimity, then somebody coming and somebody bringing something different needs to bring a whole heap of evidence. You coming to me and saying, oh, we're coming with the concept of Ummah. I'm saying we already have Ummah. Okay. I'm saying, look, we pray five times a day. Oh, we pray three times sure. a day. And out of those three times a day, you only have to pray one. Sure. That's not an upgrade. I can, I that's, can. No, no. that's not an upgrade. That's a degrade. Yeah. Five times a day, connection with God has now been taken down to three times a day. Now, even those three times, you only have to do it once. Yeah. Charity, no, 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 it's not really, it's not like this. Okay, we have imams, we have, you know, clergy and we, we have a system in place. So, no, we have a better system. What's the system? There is no clergy. So, anything that you've offered so far hasn't fulfilled the criteria that you are saying that this is a system that's supposed to be advanced better. You're saying our system is outdated. It was of a certain time. We're, and I'm proving to you that the Quran is timeless. It's yes, something, and, and then I gave you an evidence that this proves that it's timeless. So there's no need for another revelation. If another revelation is now coming, that revelation needs to, needs to prove, or that needs to explain why there is a need for another revelation. And I'm telling you that the Quran is, from the historical religions, the only book that has not been changed. The oldest manuscript that we have of the Quran is in Birmingham University. That's the oldest manuscript and it has a hundred percent word, uh, it hasn't been changed. Yeah, hundred percent word accuracy. So if the Quran has been preserved, the Hadith, which I know you wanted to get onto, has a system in which it can be, that there's a science in place that can be objectively measured, that can be scientifically measured, that can be academically measured, that's in place. In terms of a way of life, like Islam came to preserve uh, religion, intellect, Islam came to preserve life, life, Islam came to preserve marriage, Islam came to preserve wealth. So I've said all of these things, but the thing is when I asked you and I, and I pressed you for it, you were giving me stuff that Islam already covers. So for you, to then come and say, look, this is something new and there's going to be additional stuff. You need to tell me sure. what is lacking and what is, sure. uh, what are you bringing to the table? Uh, thank you for your uh, No, 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 no problem. The only reason I had to kind of just yeah, power yeah. forward no was because a few things had built up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think I kept stopping and yeah. but so I just wanted to. Sort of gone a bit like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, no worries, but, no worries. Um, I was going to say, is that, uh, as a Muslim, do you believe that, the, I, I, I asked you this question, I can't remember if you answered it. Do you believe the messengers of God have the ability to abrogate the laws of the past? I already answered that. Yeah. I did. said, no, God tells, God tells them what to do. So why don't you follow that of the Sabbath? What do you mean? So if, because you believe in Musa as well. Yeah. So one of the, one of the credence, one of the laws in, in Judaism is the Sabbath. Yeah. So why do not the Christians and the Muslims follow, continue following that, upon that law? I thought it was straightforward. Maybe I'm missing something. When after Moses came Jesus. There we go. Progressive revelation. Yeah, there's prog okay. Then just make that point then. So you're saying progressive revelation, but you only make progressive revelation. That argument works there. No, no, no. no. That, that argument works there because those scriptures have been changed and you can see and there's evidence for that. The Quran has not been changed. There's no reason for there to be another revelation after the Quran, nor will they be this when... Is what the when Christians and the Jews exactly... The there's same. no this, verses, this there's no verses in the no, Old... Oh, wait, 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 Old Testament or New Testament, there's no verse where God Himself says, I will preserve this book. Mm. Quran is the only book in which... We believe, book. but, but that you're missing the point completely. Book. I'm saying that like God... The and the Bible are, are, are but God did not promise still, to right? preserve them. It doesn't matter. It does they still, matter. They still have books... In I'll, which, I'll tell you why it matters. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why it matters. I'll tell you why it matters. But abrogation of the laws is very important because that's a sign of. I'll progress. tell you why it matters. And that's why it matters within Baha'u'llah abrogating the laws, as you said. This is why we pray. Look, when when, when, when your soul evidence when your soul evidence so is when your soul evidence is change, mm. they have been changed. They have been abrogated. Okay, mm. the books can't be accessed. 
okay, let's look at the Quran now. The Quran can be accessed. But what structure the Quran, do you have? You the Quran. Have to have a covenant. You have to have what do you mean? What structure? We have the structure in place. Brother, you're so, the, the Muslim what's the seed? So, what's the seed? So, so what, what's the what's the, what's the difference between the, the the interpretation of say ISIS, a Wahhabism, and Salafism, and all these isms? I'll use the same no thing that you said. Covenant. I'll take. This is why Baha'u'llah has come. No, no, no. This is why that, that, that's why Baha'u'llah has come. But Baha'u'llah has also brought sex as well. Then what has Baha'u'llah come with? What did Baha'u'llah Sex, yeah. sex. Uh, I don't know oh, how sex. it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, there has been sex, but they've travelled away. Yeah, they've but the sex still away. exists. You can't yeah, deny that they don't very, exist. Very well, it's the, look, it's the same with Islam. The Majority of Islam is Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaa. You do the second one that is somewhat mm. uh, big in numbers is mm. Shiism, mm. and that's it. Brother, like everything else is small. Coming, wait, wait, wait. Coming back to Old Testament, Testament New Testament. They've been changed. Mm. The final testament has not been changed. Allah Himself says, "I will but not the change it." Has been changed. Look, the hadith, have, hadith been changed. have not been changed. So example, there is a chain of narration. Look, I, I look, 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 like look. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. no. no, no, no. You're assuming what I'm saying. Let me finish. Let me finish. No. Let me finish. Ijtihad, tafsir, science of hadith and hadith preservation. All of these things are systems in place to ensure that things don't get added in, sure. things don't get taken but it out. It has been added in and things that have been scholars Where? have been putting their own narrations, Where? their own words into Where? things like that. Um, let me think of one. I can't think of one you on top can't. of my hair. I can't think of one. It's because but that you're hadith to me that none Wait, of these let me answer that point. That hadith that you would say mm. is mawdu, mm. fabricated. Mm. How do I know that? Like this, How do I know that? Though? That you should kill wait, the apostate. Wait, wait, right? look. But in the Quran, Kal it Kaleem, says there's no compulsion in Kaleem, religion. How it goes do against the Quran, my friend. Look, you yes. said that scholars can add stuff in. Sure. I answered your question by saying it's mawdu. Sure. Then I asked you, mm. how do I know it's mawdu? Mm. Uh, what's mawdu? Mawdu is fabricated. Uh, how, how, how do I know it's mawdu? No. How, how am I saying, mm. how can I distinguish between sure. a fabricated sure. And a Sahih Hadith, Sahih is authentic. Sure, because it contradicts that of the Quran. No. If, if you have a Hadith that says a stone the apostate, and then you have a verse in the Quran that says there is no compulsion in religion, clearly you would go to the point where it says there is no compulsion in religion. Therefore, people, if they want to, can leave. Where are you taking this principle from? So this principle is within the Quran. al Bakr talks about there is no compulsion in religion. That's my argument about the Hadiths have been molded throughout time to fit a certain no. narrative. You're taking a, a you you've taken a principle way. and you're saying you're saying okay this verse says this mm. another verse seemingly contradicts it therefore I'm going to abrogate that I'm saying where are you taking that methodology that that verse abrogates that verse in the Quran Al Bakr says there is no compulsion in religion how no 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 <laughs> how ha look but that's your understanding. It's not my understanding. No compulsion in religion is clear as if I say don't have sex before marriage or don't drink. It is a clear verse. So you cannot take... Okay, over you've now compelled me to come to this point, even though this point wasn't the main part of our discussion. Sure, sure, sure. De define that, apostate then. Define apostate. Somebody who leaves the fold of Islam and says, I that's don't want false. to... I don't want to be that's false. Now I have to teach you what apostate means. Okay, that's what I no, but that, but that's pointless because uh, apostasy does mean that if you leave the fold and leave it and say I don't want to be a part of it, in some countries you can be killed. This this is this is why I want to talk about the fundamentals. Brother, I also have to. And now you have to go. <laughs> no, you no. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, a few minutes. The last but, thing. Because the thing is, uh, there's no such thing as apostasy. We call it ridda, and a ridda is to do with. It, it's predicated on politicism, politically. Somebody merely leaving the religion or not having those tendencies does not mean that you stone the apostate. So that, even using the word apostasy is actually a disrespect. You actually, it's, you're not understanding the verse of the Quran and no compulsion of religion. What do you mean no compulsion of religion? You shouldn't be compelled to believe in something you do not want to Yeah, but do you see? Even at the time of Muhammad left people from the fold of Islam. But Kaleem, that's the point that I wanted to make. That's you have take Quran over Hadith. That's why hadith has been 
Unfortunately, like you said about the Bible being changed, Hadith has also been changed. This is why, in, this is why I believe in Baha'u'llah and believe Baha'u'llah is the promised one of all ages because he has categorically laid a covenant for humanity to follow that's unequivocal. You can't, you, it's so clear as the noonday sun. Brother, I have to go now though. Of course you do. <laughs> you, you've said something about the apostate. No, no, you, you, you finish. Yeah, you, you say what you finish. Look, no, 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 no. Because, You're, look. My thing to you was, how do you decide that this verse abrogates that verse? You said because the verse itself says it. Mm. No, because your understanding is that those two verses are contradictory. It's based on your understanding. And what I'm trying to tell you is your understanding of even the word apostate is false. Okay. It's actually like your definition of the word apostate. It's not what the Quran and the Hadith say. That's the first thing. Number two, something that's abrogated, it needs to follow the structure. We were talking about the structure. I'll tell you the structure, how laws are derived in Islam. First, you look at Quran, then you look at the Hadith, then it's Ijma'ah, then there's Qiyas. Before you mentioned about consensus, well, that's the third principle. You mentioned uh, consultation. Consultation and making shura is something that's present in the Quran. Second thing you mentioned was with regards to the Hadith. I told you, and I agree with you, certain Hadith are made up. And the mere presence of those made up hadith prove to us that the science of hadith works. Because how, how if. Does that work? But. How does that, if, if, if you say because, that I have a problem with this hadith and then you go, oh, it actually works, that's, that's contradiction itself. That's okay. a contradiction. Right. This is why you believe in the med. Let me the answer that. that. Look, don't, don't, don't answer it and then move on to another point. Oh, bro, I, you know, finish what you're saying. Yeah. I have to go. So look, hadith, we don't believe every single oh, utterance that somebody claims that the Prophet said is true. That's ridiculous. Sure. Somebody can come to the park and say the Prophet said this. Exactly. It's preposterous. Exactly. We have a chain of narration, a science of hadith. Yeah. We look at every single. It's preserved through Sanad, Matan, and Tariq. Mm. Yeah? Through the text. Through the time, the text, the time, and the chain. These are the three ways that it's preserved. That's why before when you were saying no abrogation and I wanted to jump in, but you weren't allowing me to, is because this is what I wanted to say. If somebody comes and says, yeah, the Prophet said this, I'll say, who did you hear it from? Like I can stand here and I can tell you now, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, don't kill women and children. You say, who, who, where, where did you get that from? I got it from Imam Malik in his Motta. Well, where did he get it from? He got it from Nafi. Where did he get it from? He got it from Abdullah bin Umar. Where did he get it from? He got it from Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I can tell you about Abdullah bin Umar, entire book on him. I can tell you Nafi, entire book on him. I can tell you Imam Malik, entire book on him. Now, if somebody comes and said, oh yeah, the Prophet said this. I said, who did you hear it from? Or oh, this guy. Wait, but okay, who did he hear it from? Well, that person. you go to the Quran first? Look, had you listened to me, I said... I, no, I'm listening to you, look, it, look, to say, Quran, you Quran, first, Quran you listen, 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 Quran, Quran, Hadith, Ijma, Qiyas. Fantastic. That's the way that so we do it. When he says there's no compulsion in religion, first you have, you have to take that as the precipice of what you have to follow when there are things within the Hadith that can contradict what that text and on saying. what base are you thinking that that verse or hadith has been so contradicted? So if somebody, again, if somebody says apostasy... No, but, that, uh, but, but where are you apostasy. taking this word apostasy from though? Apostasy, this is a Christian principle. Isn't that, it's also within Islam as No, well. that's so Ridda. You're telling me, you're telling me that it's Ridda, brother. People, people who leave Islam in some countries are not stoned to death. Yes. You're telling me, yeah. Yes. At the time of the Prophet. Yeah. Muslims had to return the apostates back he, to those lands. They were not stoned. He let, he let Search he Treaty let, of Hudaybiyah. Yeah, sure. He let people go, exactly. but is that happening today? Ottoman Empire, yeah. Muslims, Hanafis in jurisprudence, mm. uh, they sent back Vava Nam, mm. Christian apostate. They sent him back. He was not stoned to death. Sure, in terms of Christianity. Today, yeah. in Pakistan, similar things have happened. Look, th that's why I'm saying. But your my, look. My, 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 your like point my, is, look, Islam has apostasy. Is Quran, my apartment is is trying to say that you cannot 
rely on full on the hadith. You can talk about the Bible and say, oh, the Bible's been changed. I didn't say you rely Islam. solely on the hadith. I, I said you know, Quran, Ijma. But that's why I need a structure. And when I, I look gave at you the, the structure. Brother, when I look at the Baha'i system, it has a structure to unite all the people. The Baha'i system is nine people that get voted in and they're, in, they're fallible people, but they local, become infallible. National, yeah. Local, and, and look, we have five daily prayers. Yeah. You guys have three and yeah. you get to pick one. Of course. So we get to speak to God five times a day. You say we have a better yeah. system, speak to him once. But brother, you don't, How's that an upgrade? But brother, you don't, you don't uh, follow the laws of the Sabbath. Therefore, what I'm trying to say is that the messengers Why do we need God, to follow the laws because, of the Sabbath? Because the messengers of God abrogate the laws of the past. And that's yes, we, exactly. Exactly. you've answered so your own that's point. That's what I say about Baha'u'llah. That Baha'u'llah has abrogated the laws of the past. But you only past, abrogate some, you, you only yeah. abrogate something when it's false or there's something wrong with it. So tell me there's something nothing, wrong. There's nothing wrong with, with the Islamic dispensation of praying. Well, there's no need for Baha'u'llah then. No, 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 there is because again, the time of the age in which we live in is completely different to the time of Prophet Muhammad. Therefore, we have... But the Quran we, is still timeless have, and relevant. Well, I get you, uh, yeah. yes, but I'll say that about the Bible. I'll say that about the Torah. No, the Bible is not uh, timeless. It's been changed. I, I, yeah, it has been changed, but the original Has the Quran Bible, been changed? The Torah, it's all the world's... It's all the but they've all been God. changed. Quran is not changed. It's, it's all the words of God because all Do the you believe the Quran has changed? No, of course not. Then why do we need your revelation? Because the times been because the Quran yeah, doesn't what address times? this time. Like what? Give me one example. So that again, the Quran doesn't the, the times of the we've gone around in circles, but the times of the people at the time of Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him were not as developed as today. Did they have iPhones during that time? Did but how does that planes? affect creed? How does me having an iPhone affect my sure. belief in God? It's the concept of progressive revelation that Baha'u'llah has come with a whole system to unite the whole world. And brother, we won't just agree. Yeah, we yeah. won't agree. No, we, we will, we will, we will. We will, hands. trust me, we will. We, we agree on lots of things. We do, we do, but we brother, do. I gotta go back to and I want to thank you because obviously yeah. we had a nice conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It got heated, but it's cool. No, no, I, I don't think yeah. there was anything. I just want to give yeah. one. There you go. So, yeah. That was nice wicked. One, bro. Catch Take you care, later, my bro. Take care. Hey, let me give you my card, man. Yeah, me, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to just give you this. So, yeah, you can like forward me. What you what we talked about? Yeah, yeah, it. Sam Dawa and all that. Yeah, 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 don't yeah. Worry. For me, bro. All right, take, Take care, my bro. Take care. Respect, respect.